coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. It doesn't matter how big the problem is. It doesn't matter how big the problem is. Isn't it interesting? And isn't it awesome that when Jesus wanted to talk about the problem, he used the mountain. But when he wants to talk about faith, that will move that mountain. He talks about faith as a mustard seed, a little itsy bitsy seed. That means it's not by power and it's not by might. No. Hello, I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene, and this is the third week in our message series, Mark 11, 22 to 24 and more. I'll start to read from Mark, 11, chap um, Mark chapter 11 and verse 12. Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing him, and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Verse 20. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Mark 11, 22 to 24, awesome portion of scripture. We've looked at several things so far. We said, first of all, that Jesus said it first. So we found out that in Mark 11, 22 to 24, we're listening to the words of Jesus himself. Doesn't matter how many ministers have preached from this portion of scripture, Jesus said it first. The second thing we found out was you can walk by faith. So faith is not the exclusive preserve of any senior bishop or senior pastor or great man of God. You too can walk by faith. If you're a child of God, you can walk by the God kind of faith. The third thing we said, which was last week, was that real faith is the God kind and it is in God. If it is the God kind of faith, then it is in God. So the fourth thing, which we're going to kick off um, with today, is this. Now, let, before I say it, let's look at Mark eleven twenty three. For assuredly, I say to you, not that word, assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, 
he will have whatever he says. The fourth thing you need to know about this kind of faith is that faith gives a bold assurance. I want to say it again. Faith, the God kind of faith, this faith we're talking about, this faith Jesus spoke about in Mark 11, 22 to 24, this faith gives a bold assurance. Child of God, are you looking for a bold assurance in that situation you may be standing in? Are you looking for bold confidence? You don't need to run to and fro from one prayer house to the next. The God kind of faith gives you a bold assurance. Look at that word in verse 23. For assuredly, assuredly. Now, let me tell you the meaning of that word. In some of your Bibles, it would read verily. So, verily, assuredly. It is the Greek word, amen. Aha, you know that word, don't you? It is the Greek word, amen, of Hebrew origin. It is a transliteration of the Hebrew word, truth. And it means, listen, it means, so be it. It means, surely. It means, firm. It means to be permanent or quiet when something is permanently taken care of. To be permanent or quiet. Amen. So in other words, Jesus put it this way. Amen, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain. Doesn't that look like an upside down way of the way we normally would use amen? I would normally put amen this way, I would say. For I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. And everybody said, amen. Normally you would put amen at the end and so be it. But Jesus began Mark 11, 23 with amen. He says, verily, offer truth. Listen, what I'm about to tell you, so be it. It is settled forever. I believe that Jesus did that because he knew that what he was about to say was so contrary to natural thinking. What he was about to say was going to blow the disciples off their feet. What he was about to say, he knew that they had to have an upfront guarantee. It's almost like when a businessman has a contract and... You know, he gives the contractor some money. And there are two things that can happen, two risks he's facing. The contractor could take that money and just run off with the money. Or the contractor could take the money and do a very shabby job and you know, do a mediocre job and still run off with the rest of the money. So what does a proper businessman do, a businessman who is well-schooled? What he does is he either gets an, an advance payment guarantee or he gets a performance bond. He gets something to make sure that the contractor delivers delivers on that money that he was given. That's like what Jesus was doing here. He was giving you an upfront guarantee, child of God. He was giving you a performance bond. He put the amen right at the beginning. He says, look, assuredly, I say to you, verily, in some places when Jesus wants to say such things, he would even put the verily twice. Verily, verily, offer truth, permanent, settled, surely, so be it, I say to you. Why was he doing all of that, child of God? He wanted you to have a calm, relaxed bold assurance where the God kind of faith is concerned. Are you looking for an assurance again, I ask? Many times we run, we run from, from, from pillar to post looking for an assurance. You don't need to run around anymore. There is an assurance in the God kind of faith. And when you begin to develop that God kind of faith, there will be a calmness of spirit that will come upon you even in the most turbulent storm. Even in the greatest of crises, you will just have a calm, bold, relaxed assurance because you know that so be it if that is what the word of God said. It is settled forever. Glory be to God. Now look at this portion of scripture in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 5. Let me read this to you. This is the story of a man who had a calm, bold, relaxed assurance in the face of a real bad situation. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Whew, and I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. And said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into, cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then Jesus said to the centurion, 
go your way as you have believed. So let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Look at the effect of having a calm, bold, confidence, assurance. Look at, look at verse 5 again. And I want to show you five, verse 5 and 6. Five words. And, and, and show you what those five words are depicting. It says, a centurion came to him pleading. Pleading. Look at that first word. Pleading. Like begging and pleading and groveling. Ple pleading. And then he said, my servant is lying at home. So the servant wasn't standing up doing his business. He was lying down, showing it was a bad situation. Then he says he's at home paralyzed. He was paralyzed. He couldn't even get up if he wanted to. Then he went on to say he was dreadfully tormented. If you take those words, what picture does it create? Somebody who is pleading about somebody who is lying, paralyzed, in a dreadfully tormented state. That sounds like a desperate situation. Child of God, have you ever found yourself in that kind of desperate situation? And then maybe you come to church and then you say, you know, you're looking for pastors. And you find pastor and pastor says, I will give you a word and you go home with that word. I can guarantee you that 80, 90 percent of those people, those of us who are watching would say, pastor, I'm not going with any word. Follow me to my house, pastor. Come with me to my house. And even if pastor comes to your house and prays for the situation and it, you don't see an instant change, you say, pastor, don't go anywhere. Don't go, don't go. Pastor will tell you, no, I have sent the word and it's done. You say, pastor, nothing has changed. That is not the kind of faith we're talking about. This man had what could best have been described as a desperate situation. Somebody lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. But then he said to Jesus, just speak a word. Just send the word. Once you send the word, that's all I need. I just came to get a word from you. And if I can build my faith in that word that you have spoken, I know that it's settled forever. And Jesus called it great faith. I mean, if Jesus would call it great faith, then better believe me, friend, that it was great faith. Because Jesus is not, you know, somebody who flatters people. He wasn't going to call it great faith if it wasn't great faith. So what kind of faith can we describe that as? Great faith that has a bold assurance. Great faith that will take the word of God. And in spite of the circumstance, in spite of how desperate a picture the situation seems to paint, great faith would say, no, 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 no. I have a bold assurance in what God has said. Hallelujah. Mark 9, 23 says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Clearly, with the God kind of faith, the impossible becomes possible. I want to say it again. Clearly, with the God kind of faith, the impossible becomes possible. And that should be a norm for you as a child of God. Look at the next thing, which is the second thing we're looking at today. And the last point we'll look at today. Look at Mark eleven twenty. So let me start from 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, ah, look at that. Whoever says to this mountain, what does that tell you? Point number five, it tells you that faith has a target. Faith has a target. For a lot of us believers, faith is like this abstract thing we are trying to understand. I know they say I should have faith. Oh, I want to have faith. Oh God, help me have faith. Oh, I pray. Let me have faith. And faith looks like something abstract you're trying to grasp. No, 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 no. One of the things that will help you realize how very tangible and real faith is, is when you recognize that faith has a target. Faith is not just a feeling floating around somewhere. Faith has a target. Glory be to God. When you talk about the input of faith, you talk about the input of faith with respect to God and his word. You say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So whether or not there's a circumstance, whether or not there's a situation, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But when you talk about the output of faith, there is a target. Too many believers come to church, read the word, and we're just hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And we're not doing the word of God. We're just hearing and hearing and hearing input and input and input. It's time to bring it out. And you bring it out towards a target. Glory be to God. You bring it out towards a target. Whenever there seems to be a problem or trouble in your life, it is simply an opportunity for your faith. I want to say it again. When there seems to be a storm or there seems to be a problem or there seems to be an unsavory situation in your life, it is simply an opportunity for your faith. R.W. Schambach puts it this way. He says, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. Because if you have faith in God, then you target that faith towards that situation. And faith will move that mountain and take care of that situation. Jesus said to them, whoever says to this mountain, stop and think. Couldn't Jesus have said, whoever says to 
this rock. I mean, he was in, in a place. There must have been rocks on the floor. He could have kicked a rock and said, whoever says to this rock, and kept on saying what he wanted to say. Or he could have looked at a rose bush or looked at a thorn bush and said, whoever says to this shrub or to this bush, or looked at a tree and said, whoever says to this tree. But he didn't do that. What did he do? He chose a mountain as his target. And we're going to see why he did that. He said, whoever says to this mountain, so it was a specific mountain. Like I said, why didn't he use a rock or use a tree or use a bush? Because, listen, child of God, he knew that his disciples and you who would read this portion of scripture later, you could contemplate moving a rock with your foot. No big deal. You could contemplate cutting down a rose bush or a thorn bush. No big deal. You could contemplate cutting down a tree or a storm would, you know, you know, cause the trunk of a tree to be broken by the thunder and the lightning and it would fall down. You can naturally contemplate the possibility of moving a rock, a tree, a rose bush, but it's impossible for you to contemplate naturally moving a mountain. And he looked around and he said, I'm going to use something that they cannot naturally contemplate. I'm going to give them the upfront guarantee. Assuredly, listen, what I'm about to tell you is beyond your natural thinking. But listen, if you have this, coin, this kind of faith I'm talking about, you can say to this mountain, and he pointed at an actual physical mountain. It wasn't a metaphorical mountain. You can take that expression mountain now and apply it to situations in your life that, you know, look like Goliaths before you. But that wasn't what he was doing at that point in time. He pointed to a physical mountain and he was trying to show them mm, so many awesome things. Look at the first thing he was trying to show them. Listen, a mountain is something that blocks your view and obstructs your way. A mountain is something that blocks your view and obstructs your way. And he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed. Whoever says to that thing that has blocked your view of what God has in store for you, whoever says to that situation that has obstructed your way and you can't live out the fullness of God for your life anymore, you can't live out the fullness of, of God for your life because of that health challenge, you can't live out the fullness of your purpose in life because of that career challenge or that business challenge or that, that spouse challenge. He says, look, whoever says to this mountain, this thing that is obstructing your view and blocking your way, be removed what does it mean to be removed? That word means, listen, I hope you're getting this child of God. It means to bear away, listen, to bear away what has been raised. Something that has been raised up, a problem that has come up. It says to bear it away, to carry off and move from its place. So for as long as that mountain is in that place, it seems to think it is in its place. But faith comes and moves that mountain because there is a rightful owner for that place. Faith comes and moves that cancer for there is a rightful owner and that rightful owner is divine healing and health. Faith comes and moves that asthma because there is a rightful owner for that asthma and the rightful owner for that place that the asthma has, has taken is healing and health. Faith comes and moves that challenge in your workplace, moves that boss that has been sitting on your promotion because there is a rightful owner for that promotion and that rightful owner for that place is you. Glory be to God. It says, if you say to this mountain, this thing that seems to have been sitting in this place and seems to think that it is in its rightful place. Faith will come and bear that thing away, no matter how high it has been raised up. Faith will come, glory be to God, and bear it away from that place. Faith will come and call it a liar. Faith will come and say, you don't belong here. You have stayed here and taken possession of this place. But faith will come and say, I know my covenant. I know the blessing. There is a rightful owner for this place. Glory be to God. And faith will come and move that mountain. And he said to them, target your faith. Target your faith. If you say to this mountain, if you say to this mountain, mountain. Look at something else he was saying to them. Can you imagine that throughout the lifetime of those disciples, that mountain had always been there. Oh, somebody listen to me with your heart, please. God is ministering to some of you right now. That mountain had always been there, child of God. I can imagine that when Peter and James and John were in primary school and their teacher said, you know, let's draw a landscape of the city. And they looked out of the window of their primary school, somewhere in the vicinity, somewhere in the horizon, they would see that mountain because it had always been there. That mountain didn't grow 
in their lifetime. It was part of the landscape of that city. It had always been there, but Jesus chose that mountain. He says, look, that thing that obstructs your view, that thing that seems to have been in its, in it, in its place all this while, it's time to move it. That thing that has become a landscape of your life, ooh, that thing that has become a part of the landscape of your life, faith, the God kind of faith, will move that mountain. Glory be to God. It doesn't matter how long it has been there. It doesn't matter how long that thing has been in the DNA of your family. It doesn't matter if your father had diabetes and your grandfather had diabetes and your great-grandfather died of something that looked like diabetes. And you say, well, it is part of the landscape of this family. Nay, reject it in the name of Jesus. Faith has come. And it doesn't matter how long that mountain has been part of the landscape of your history or part of the landscape of your life. It is time to change the landscape and look at what happens when the landscape is changed? Can you imagine when that mountain physically is moved out of that place? What happens? There is bare ground. There is bare ground. And all the city would have come outside and looked and said, what happened to this mountain? It has always been here. But you know what they would find? They would find bare ground, which tells me they would find opportunities when your faith will rise up and move that mountain that has been there, designing the landscape of your life all these years. When your faith will say, I've had enough. Enough is enough. I'm taking hold of what the word of God has to say in this situation, there will be so many new opportunities, things that you never knew you could do before because that mountain was sitting on that bare ground. But when you move that mountain with the God kind of faith, hallelujah, when you move that mountain, awesome opportunities come your way. Jesus was also saying to them by showing them that mountain, it doesn't matter how big the problem is. It doesn't matter how big the problem is. Isn't it interesting? And isn't it awesome that when Jesus wanted to talk about the problem, he used the mountain. But when he wants to talk about faith that will move that mountain, he talks about faith as a mustard seed, a little itsy bitsy seed. That means it's not by power and it's not by might. No, it doesn't matter how big the mountain is. If you have a calm, relaxed assurance and it's supernatural faith, the God kind of faith, that faith will move that mountain. It doesn't matter how big it is. And you will recognize just like David that it doesn't matter how big Goliath is. And all of Israel is screaming and saying, oh, Goliath is so big, he's going to crush us. And David looked at Goliath like my pastor would say and David said no Goliath is so big a target I can't miss him and he took a stone and off he went and he nailed Goliath because Goliath was a big target child of God that mountain is a target for your faith that mountain is a target for your faith and if it is the God kind of faith if it is the God kind of faith if it is the God kind of faith it will move that mountain it will move that mountain it will move that mountain the mountain may even be your conditioning and your mind because of how long that problem is there it's time for you to step into the God kind of faith child of God and recognize that if you can only believe if you can only believe the impossible will become possible in your life. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for the privilege to have the God kind of faith. Thank you for teaching us how to exercise the God kind of faith. We love you, Father. We give you all the praise and all of the glory. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. As you watch the message, some of you were seeing the mountains that seem to have been looming in front of you. And I want us to join our faith together. There's also the principle of agreement. I want us to agree together and move that mountain in the name of Jesus. So whatever that mountain is, just call it out. If it's a sickness, if it's a, a, a job situation, whatever it is that has come before you as a mountain, that mountain can move today by the God kind of faith. Glory be to God. So say that thing, just call it out, whatever it is, and I'll just pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because your word is true. And now we're going to apply your word and move these mountains by the God kind of faith. Mountain, as you have been named, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command you to get out of that place and leave room for God's people to live out the fullness of their lives in the name of Jesus. Mountain, you be moved right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Thank you because somebody who is asthmatic is getting healed by the power of God. Thank you because somebody else who has not been hearing from the left ear, in fact, there's been like pus coming out of that ear. That person is healed by the power of God. There's somebody else who has a terrible ulcer situation. It's been so bad that you can't eat 
you know, anything peppery. Well, that mountain has moved right now in the name of Jesus. You have been healed. And after this program is over, you can go and find something wonderful to eat that has pepper. And you find out that you've been healed. Somebody else, you've had problems swallowing. And each time you try to swallow, it's like there's a big obstruction in your throat. That obstruction has been moved by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Somebody else suffers from terrible migraine conditions, very terrible. And in fact, while the message was going on, that migraine seemed to be pounding and getting worse. That migraine is moved right now in the name of Jesus and you have been healed and made whole. Whatever the condition is, it doesn't even matter if it hasn't been called. That mountain has been moved by our faith right now. A woman who's been suffering from a discharge it's a really smelly discharge and it has affected your love life with your husband and he's made you feel like an outcast because of that discharge. That discharge dries up right now. There's a specific woman I'm speaking to. That discharge dries up right now in the name of Jesus. You are healed and delivered because we have the God kind of faith. Thank you, Father, so much. Thank you so much. This is so exciting. Father, we just love you. We love you so very much. Thank you too for watching Fresh Dew. Thank you for every single time you spend with me on Fresh Dew. I enjoy every moment I spend with you on Fresh Dew. Please send in your testimonies. Tell us what God is doing in your life through Fresh Dew. And I look forward to being with you same time, same station next week. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nketi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ket. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nketi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.